Some people say that cats have nine lives, but how many lives does a ghost town have? The ghost town of Gold Hill, Utah had three. Gold Hill was first settled in 1892 when a treasure trove of minerals were discovered in these mountains. They discovered silver, gold, copper, lead, tungsten, arsenic, and bismuth. The town bloomed and had all kinds of hotels, stores, and saloons. The town even had its own newspaper, the Gold Hill News. The population here soared to 3,000, but the residents here felt that the hard mineral water was unfit to drink, so they had to rely on stuff in bottles. The saloons here ran a good business. Gold Hill was never an attractive place. Most people either lived in tents or canvas-covered shacks, or some did have homes. They weren't concerned about appearances because if word came of another gold strike elsewhere, they would have to relocate. They only retained what they could haul in one trip in case the call came to move on. There were so many abandoned mine shafts everywhere, even in the streets, that people found it convenient to build privies over them. This served two purposes. One, it saved them a lot of digging, and two, it kept automobiles from falling in. In 1917, a railroad was built into Gold Hill. On its journey from Wendover, the Deep Creek Cannonball train never exceeded speeds of 15 miles per hour. One night, the Cannonball train was held up by bandits. They got away with $4, a mail pouch, and the conductor's watch. The next day, authorities found the watch ticking away in the sagebrush and the mail pouch, which only contained mail order catalogs. A week later, authorities arrested a couple teens in a grocery store who turned out to be the bandits. It wasn't so much that they stopped a train that got them into so much trouble. It was that they stole a government mail pouch and they accidentally shot a passenger in the leg. In 1916, the town came alive again. World War I was on and copper was in demand. Old mines were reopened and new ones located. During World War I, the U.S. government was short on tungsten and arsenic. Gold Hill had plenty of both, which became more valuable than copper and gold. All the cotton fields in the South were being overrun by the cotton boll weevil, which was controlled by arsenic the U.S. cotton industry would have probably been wiped out were it not for Gold Hill arsenic. In 1924, the government found cheaper arsenic from foreign sources. So when that boom collapsed here, it took the town with it. The last train to leave Gold Hill whistled through this pass in 1938. From 1944 to 1945, 8,000 tons of ore were shipped out, but that was all the government needed. When production stopped, the population disappeared overnight. In 1946, the school was closed, and in 1949, the post office closed. By 1952, only five people were left. Gold Hill rose and fell three times during the years. And there's a life lesson here for us. Like Gold Hill, we can develop as many talents as we can so that we can serve in different ways and at different times. I'm Ken Gallagher, and we'll see you next time on Life Lessons from Ghost Town History.